How to save a marriage on the brink of divorce. Do you think I've done that before? I've got a little bit of experience. Listen in. Okay, time to get to work today. What I am going to share with you is not easy. The principles are simple. Simple and easy aren't the same thing. If you want an easy solution, you're going to have to go find another channel. If you want one that works, stick around because I'm going to share with you some things that you can do starting right now today that can save a marriage that's on the brink of divorce, but it's not going to be easy. You need to be ready to do some hard things. So with that little disclaimer, let me review for you some research that illuminated what direction we need to go. Dr. John Gottman, one of the nation's leading researchers in marriage and couple relationships, found in a monster study that he pulled off over 20 years ago, that roughly 70% of all of the problems in a relationship are unresolvable. Unresolvable? I share that with some couples and they just throw their hands in the air. It's like, oh, well, what's the use, right? And others are just relieved because they realize they're not so weird after all. The problems that we face are because of differences. Differences create conflicts, but differences also give us a purpose for that relationship in the first place. The, it's the differences that make us meaningful and relevant and interesting to each other. And even at the level of gender, this is true in a marriage, it's the differences that are interesting. So differences are essential to a relationship, but they also create conflict. Now here's what Gottman found as well. That 70% number, is true for miserable, highly conflicted, headed for divorce couples. Not too surprising. That number is also true for happy, well-adjusted, stable, satisfied couples. There was no difference between these two groups in the number of unresolvable problems that they had or the nature or magnitude of those problems. That's not what distinguished these two groups. This is huge. And it put on a little light bulb in my head to realize, you know what? It's not about the problems. Because back in shrink school, they taught us, bring a couple in, sit them on your couch. Yes, I have a couch right over there. And talk to them for an hour or more about their problems. And people would leave here feeling worse than they did when they came in. Or like they're being beat up or there's no hope doesn't work. What we need to do is figure out what's the difference between these miserable, highly conflicted, headed for divorce couples and the ones that are stable and satisfied and just feeling good about their marriage. They've all got problems. So that's not it. Here's the difference. How do they handle those problems? So really quickly, a recap of what Dr. Gottman found on this side, on the miserable side, he called it the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's a four part process that led people to handling their problems in a way that put them on the miserable side of the board. So here's what he identified. Number one, criticism. Number two, defensiveness. Number three, contempt. And number four, stonewalling, which is kind of like turning away from each other instead of turning toward each other. Without getting into all of the details about what those four horsemen are all about, notice that you do this in your relationship. Yeah, and I don't share this with you to alarm you. I just want you to be aware of what's not working. Because if we persist in doing what's not working, what kind of results do you think we're going to get? Yeah, this isn't rocket science. It's brain science. It's psychology. It's a different field. So, let Basically, what we need to do is more of what works and less of what doesn't. Does that make sense? Yeah, so what works? That's what we need to get down to. Here's what I want you to try. You know what? I said that kind of funny because it's not about what I want. It's about what you're looking for. How do you save a marriage that's on the brink of divorce? Try this. Try a five-day experiment. Now, we're going to call it an experiment because that's brain-friendly. Meaning, you're not going to resist it as much if it's just an experiment. 
right? You don't have to change the way you're doing anything. You're just doing an experiment. Do you see how we're gonna kind of go in the back door of your brain there? Five day experiment, find a way. Write this down, get you a notepad or something so that you can jot this down. We're working today. Write it down and give it a try. Starting today. And then after the five day experiment, you can do a little evaluation and see, well, is this working or not working? And you'll be able to tell the difference. So here's your five day experiment. The first task in your five day experiment is called 95 five. This is the hardest thing I'm going to ask you to do. It's a simple principle, but simple and easy aren't the same thing. We already talked about that. Here's what I mean. 95 five is a ratio. Okay. A lot of people go into marriage thinking that it's a 50 50 kind of a proposition, right? You do your half. I'll do my half. Everybody's happy, right? No, that never works. And think about it. You're already doing your half, aren't you? Yeah. So it's not about a 50 50. Here's what 95 five is. I want you to assume 95% of the responsibility for this marriage. And you're going to expect about 5% from your spouse. All right. Now, anyone with a pulse can do 5%. What that means is your spouse is already doing enough. Now your mind is going to resist that idea because you already know all these things that your spouse could be doing better and you're right, but that's not helpful. See, the temptation is to think, you know what? This thing would be so much better if my spouse would just shape up. And you're right. I'm going to give that to you. This would be better if your spouse would shape up. But as soon as we identify what someone else can do, what does that look like, feel like, sound like to them? Criticism. Sound familiar from the four horsemen? Yeah, doesn't work. Okay, even if you're right, it can be right, but not useful. So we're going to go to 95, five, you assume 95% of the responsibility and you expect about 5% from your spouse. So whatever you're already getting from them is enough. Now this switches the focus instead of what could my spouse be doing better to, Hey, you know what? What could I be doing better? And I guarantee you, you're going to find some things to work on. We've already posted some videos that have specifics around different things that you could be working on. Browse around the channel a little bit and find some things that speak to you in terms of what you personally could be working on. This is huge. And that's probably enough to save a marriage that's on the brink of divorce. If you'll practice this 95, five, do a five day experiment and see what happens. Okay. Two more real quick. Now the second one is 25, five. This is why I wanted you to write it down because each of these is a little different. 95, five is about your focus. 25, five is a gratitude exercise. I'm not going to give you all the rationale. I'm just going to give you the experiment for five days. That's the five part of 25, five. You make a written list of 25 things for which you are sincerely grateful. Now, gratitude has been shown in the research and in our clinical experience to be a very powerful catalyst for all kinds of positive changes. So just trust me that there's a lot of rationale behind this. You're going to list 25 things for which you're grateful. Now you don't get to repeat anything on tomorrow's list that was on today's list. Whole new list tomorrow. Now here's where we're going to power it up. Okay at least half of your list. That's 13. If you're doing the math, at least half of your list every day is about your spouse or your marriage the way it is right now without changing anything. So we're not talking about how it could be or how it might be or what we're going to create it to be. No, the way it is right now, what are you grateful for? Now, if you feel some resistance, that's good because it just shows that you're used to thinking about this thing in a whole different way. We're flipping a switch in your brain and in your mind to ask it to find 
something that you're grateful for, and you'll find it if you'll look. Your brain has the power to find this for you. That's 25-5. Now, the last suggestion that I'm going to give you for this five-day experiment is a daily triple play where you get to give, send, and serve. Let's talk about all three. Give. What you're going to give in each of these five days is a social gift to your spouse. There are four of them. I got these from Dr. Ann Demeray, who, who wrote a book called First Impressions, and these are brilliant. So here are the four social gifts. Appreciation, that's just gratitude, and you're already doing your gratitude list, so you can just pull something off of there and share it as a social gift to your spouse. Connection, this is where you come together, things that you have in common, where you acknowledge and give a social gift of acknowledging the connection that you have with that person, something in common. The next one is enlightenment. That's a gift of knowledge. It usually starts with, hey, did you hear? Or did you know that? And then you give them some, some knowledge. That's a social gift of enlightenment. And then finally is elevation. Elevation is exactly what it sounds like. An elevator lifts people, right? So you're going to lift your spouse. You are going to elevate and enhance and edify your spouse. This can be done through a pleasant face. Smile. Oh my gosh, that tends to lift people's mood, right? The appropriate use of humor is another way. Keeping things lighter, be less uptight about stuff. All right, so you're going to give one of those four social gifts to your spouse on each of the next five days, starting today. That's part of the experience. I said give, send, and serve. So let's go to send next. What are you going to send? A message. What is the message? It is simply this, that you value this relationship and that you are willing to do what is required on your own part to make this work. Okay, you send that message. Find a way to send it five times every day. Each of the next five days is part of the experiment. Send the message that you value this relationship. It might be a little note. It might be finding your spouse's favorite candy bar and leaving it on the pillow. Whatever it is, okay, a thoughtful text, um, a touch sometimes can convey this. So you find a way to send the message. Number three is to serve. Serve your spouse. Find a way to step up and do something different from what you've been doing normally. Um, I had a guy in my office, he said, well, I go to work and that's for her. I'm, no, no, yes, I mean, keep going to work, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about do something special. Do something that's out of your way to serve your spouse. Give a social gift, send the message that you value this relationship and serve your spouse. That's the triple play, five days in, in your experiment. Hopefully you took notes on all of those because this is gonna be a lot of work, but I guarantee you, if you'll do these things, you can and probably will save this marriage. Okay, so this is a work video today. I gave you a challenge, a five day challenge. Come back in five days and share your experience of how that experiment worked for you. Don't